after dealing with an urban environment on a daily basis, I find it necessary to recharge in a natural surrounding to maintain a balanced perspective on life. This is the Florida Field Journal. Fortunately, here in Florida, we are never too far from a park or a preserve. I'm at the Celery Fields, an amazing place to exercise limbs and lungs and eyes and ears. Soon, there will be an education center to exercise our minds. I meet up with Jean Duby to find out more. I'm Jean Duby, the president of the Sarasota Audubon Society. And right now we're at the celery fields, which is a wonderful birdie site in Sarasota County. And right behind me, we are, you can see that we're building a nature center, Sarasota Audubon Nature Center. And that will be a place where we will welcome eco-tourists and visitors to Sarasota County, specifically the celery fields. And we can help educate them about the birds in the area. Our building is going to be a lead building, so that, and the center will have native plant gardens. So the whole center will be an educational experience for visitors. Well, it's pretty windy up here today and we can hear the equipment roaring down there, but it looks impressive. They've come a long way in just a week. Oh, they have, and uh, they're on a really um, quick schedule. Uh, Willis Smith is the builders, and they say they will have this completed in five months. So we're looking by uh, end of July, beginning of August, for the building to be finished. The building, the gardens we'll, we'll be doing later on. Right, so, so it's going to be ready for next fall when schools are in session and uh, the snowbirds come down here, there's yes. no migration. <laughs> yes, exactly. So the aim is to have it operational by October, the be beginning to middle of October, so that we can start welcoming our members back who disappear in the summertime. And so uh, I, that'll give us a couple of months from August, and August and September to, to get the place ready. So it, it's quite an addition to this enormous complex how many acres are here total? Oh, well, 360 acres are under uh, stormwater, under the stormwater management. And this celery fields used to be a celery, an agricultural area that predominantly grew celery. But the county purchased this back in 92 in order to um, collect water, stormwater, uh, from um, a wide area around here in the Roberts Bay North Watershed. And so the plants and all of the um, uh, canals are able to filter the pollutants before the water gets into uh, Philippi Creek. It also prevents a lot of homes downstream for, from having the water in them. <laughs> well, that's exactly right. In fact, that was the prime reason that the county purchased the land in the first place, because every time there were, uh, there were floods or hurricanes, tropical storms, Dozens of houses downstream would get flooded out, and so this was their uh, solution. It's you know, an amazing place for people to come. But how many bird species are out here? <clears throat> well, altogether, we, be, we record all, all the birds that we see, and we've been monitoring the bird population here since, 19, uh, since about the year 2000. So uh, we're up to 220 species within 360 acres, which is remarkable. And the county, because we've worked very um, well with the county in collaboration with them to develop this not only as a birding destination, but a passive uh, recreational area as well. And the county has put in trails and paths, and I think there's about seven miles of trails around the system. That's great. That's amazing. And we're sitting on a, we're standing right on a wonderful hill here. <laughs> yes, Sarasota Mountain. <laughs> right. <laughs> and this came from the ponds? 
Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, a lot of people think that this is landfill, but it isn't landfill. It's simply um, the, the soil that was gouged out out of the ponds in order to allow collection of water. And um, the county, the, when, when there are storms, this facility can hold 18 feet of water. So it, it's, it really serves its purpose. It's a dual purpose site. It's public safety and recreation as well. I, I see there's a lot of hikers and joggers and, and of course people just bird, birding. That's right, <laughs> that's right. Uh, we have a couple of programs <clears throat> that we developed over the last several years. Um, one of them is a docent program where people, where we have volunteers on um, each of the two boardwalks every day and their job is to meet and greet visitors and help them identify birds and plants in the celery fields. And it's, it's, a, it's a hugely um, popular program as well. So. You also have worked with uh, Around the Bend and uh, the Sarasota schools. Yes, that's right. Our, our children's program is really wonderful. It's called the Celery Fields Explorers. It's operated by Around the Bend Nature Tours. And it's partially funded by the Gulf Coast Community Foundation, which we are extremely grateful for. And uh, we've also received um, money from the uh, Natural Heritage Fund and, uh, of course, our wonderful members. And that program costs us about $20,000 a year, but we're able to bring over 1,100 kids out every year for environmental education. That's terrific. Yeah. A lot of those kids wouldn't get out at all if it wasn't for that program. No, that's right. And the, um, the, the reason for that is that we, we provide the transportation money. Um, schools just can't afford to, sh to bus kids out on field trips, basically. So we provide that funding for that. What would you like to see here five years from now? Uh, well, uh, the area where we're building, we are going to establish native plant gardens, and we're going to be planting some more trees and shrubs along the hill. And the county has uh, planted many, many trees and plants throughout the entire system. Uh, over 200,000 plants, by the way, and trees. And we're waiting for those to mature. Um, most, uh, the bulk of them were, not, uh, were installed in, in 211, 212. So the oak trees, for example, we need uh, time for them to really grow up. And we're looking forward to seeing lots of woodland warblers in those trees. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now on the hilltop, I've noticed a lot of variety in plantings. And there seem to be like little zones. Mm -hmm. That's, I guess, to get a mixture of birds in here. Well, not just birds, actually. I mean, uh, birds feed on insects and animals and reptiles and so on. And so that planting is, it mimics a native um, area. So all of the plants up here are native. And in some, some cases, there are shrubs. In others, there are groves of trees. And so it's a very mixed, uh, mixed planting of, of trees and shrubs, which really um, can be attractive to many, many things. Butterflies and uh, rodents that uh, the owls feed on. Um, it's endless, basically. So they've accommodated for everything. That's great. <clears throat> I can't wait to see how it you know, develops over the years. Yeah, right. Uh, and I've, I've watched uh, the celery fields uh, increase their species, particularly limpkins and uh, purple gallinons. Mm -hmm. they, they seem to have exploded in mm -hmm. the last year or two. Well, that's true, and that's uh, partially uh, we can take responsibility for that, the Sarasota Audubon, because we did work with the county and um, advise them on what plants and shrubs would be good for what species of birds. And purple gallinules is a perfect example that if you plant alligator flag, they'll come, they'll find it. And there is quite a lot of alligator flag here. And it's a typical marsh plant, so it's perfect for this environment. And uh, the limpkins, of course, have exploded because of the apple snails that are here. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful marshland, wetland. It, and it used to be kind of a swampy area, I guess. 
Um, historically, uh, before even um, the Spanish exploration, this, this was actually a sawgrass marsh, this area. So um, Sarasota itself was either sawgrass marsh or pine flatwoods. That was the typical habitats here. And so, yes, this is a, we, we, we're reverting back to ancient times. Yeah, I'm sure the birds appreciate it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's really wonderful. It's a, and what's happening, and what I've seen happen over the last 10 years, let's say, are developments uh, being uh, built around the celery fields. And so what's going to happen eventually this will be like a central park in the middle of a very urban environment. It is almost uh, that now, but when we first started working here in the celery fields, this, the east of us was pasture land, and, uh, but now it's development. So, so this becomes more important uh, all the time. It's an oasis, not only for people, but for the birds. Yes, the yes, exactly. And it's big enough for that. I mean, one of the issues with uh, trying to maintain habitat for birds and, and other creatures is that you can't just do it in small pieces. If you do small pieces, they have to be connected. So this is a really large area, and so it has the best chance of providing the best habitat for the birds. Well, that's great. And, uh, I look forward to seeing the building coming out of the ground and, and uh, Hopefully, I know you're still a little short on funding, mm -hmm. but I feel the people in Sarasota will step up. Well, the project, uh, well, the original budget was 1.3 million. Uh, we have raised 1.1 and a little more million, and so we're still needing 200,000. So uh, we are hoping, and because it's a community resource, we, although it's going to be our, our administrative headquarters, it's really, first and foremost, a community resource. And it would be wonderful if the community stepped up and helped us finish, get over the finish line. Yes, and uh, people need to realize that Audubon is not just birds. That's, that's right. I mean, we have conservation programs that we, uh, one of our, our, um, our biggest heartache is trying to get the birds on the <clears throat> beaches to survive. And we're just about to come up to another season of that. And, uh, you know, we put a lot of effort, a lot of volunteers onto the beaches in the hot, hot summertime to protect the birds on the beach. And that's, that's, that's our star conservation project. The celery fields are already a popular place for walking and jogging and bird watching. Sarasota Audubon and Around the Bend Nature Tours work to bring students out to learn about this unique place and see a wide range of birds. People that have binoculars, go out to the gazebo. <laughs> Above our head are tree swallows, and good luck trying to count them all, but we'll guesstimate. Powder blue on his forehead, his bill looks like candy corn, and he's right down there. Hi, I'm Barry Rossheim. I teach at Venice High School, and I have my zoology club out here for the Great Backyard Bird Count. What we're doing is citizen science, and we're going to record the number of the different kinds of species of birds and enter it on computer at the Great Backyard Bird Count site. People all over Sarasota County, all over Florida, and not just in the United States, but all over the world are recording numbers of birds so that we can get an idea of which species are increasing, decreasing, and have stable populations. So I'm thrilled to have students at Venice High School participate in that citizen science. How long has the bird count been going on? 
Well, the Christmas bird count has been going on for a hundred years. I believe the great backyard bird count started in 1998. But uh, citizen science for birds is the longest running animal survey that there is, and that would be Christmas time for the Christmas bird count. <laughs> Come here, take turns taking photos of this heron. Come here, I'll show you how the camera works. This way. See, he's in the, the scope. All you have to do is hit the OK button, aim right at that, and it takes the picture. Hey, if you didn't see the green heron in the spotting scope, go to the you far away? <laughs> I wonder what it looks like if you look into somebody else's binoculars. I don't see. Yeah, it's way on focus, like I can't even get it to be focused. <laughs> yeah, it's impossible. And take it. All you have to do is oh, wow. aim this. Wait, at this. Watch what happens. I'm just saying that's how you take a picture of it. Go ahead and click it, but make sure this doesn't move. That's fine. No, it's a crack of that. That's a crack of bird. Aim it at that and press the OK button. <laughs> <laughs> Wood stork. See that black and white bird flying to the left, the big one? That's a wood stork. Recorded. It is a male belted kingfisher. This bird, the males are not as colorful as the females. Who was the first to spot that bird? They get extra credit, whoever spotted that bird. <laughs> no, I don't, I, it wasn't me. <laughs> Bring the spotting scope this way. Yes. If you're a good photographer, you point your shadow at the bird. At least, I would say, 300 tree swallows. At least 300. There's a hundred of them first that are in the line. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Celery Field. I am Mary Foster with Around the Bend Nature Tours, and I am joined with two other guides here. In the back, there's Steve and Sherry, and we are going to be joining you on Mr. Rothmine's Magical Mystery Bird Count. <laughs> Great backyard bird count. That's right. Shake the picture. So we are going to be splitting up into two groups and going forth and spotting birds and counting birds. We're hiking. Bring your stuff. We're rolling. Now, we have one group that's going to be going around that way. We have another group that's going to be going around that way, and we're going to end up on the Palmer um, gazebo. <laughs> Where's Steve's group? <laughs>
Well, I'm the vice president of the Venice High Zoology Club, and we are out here for the Great Backyard Bird Count to count all the different species of birds and how many we see. What What did you find interesting about it this time? There are a lot of different types of birds that you can see in one place, and there's so many different colors of them. The celery fields are an amazing place here. Very lucky. Uh, what What do you find interesting about being in the zoology club? Just that we get to help different organizations raise money for conservation projects like the celery fields. What are you interested in doing? Well, I was originally interested in being a vet. So I kind of got into zoology club for the animal purpose of it and to help save some of the animals that are endangered. And have you changed your plans or? Yeah, a little bit. I'm still thinking about being a vet, like just in case what I want to do now doesn't work out. And what do you want to do now? I want to be a behavioral analyst for the FBI wow. or a medical examiner. I just this year joined the Venice Zoology Club and it's just been a great experience. Um, definitely got a lot of friends in here, uh, people that I didn't even know were as passionate about some things that we're doing. And it's, just, it's great to be surrounded by a bunch of teenagers that actually have the same drive and passion for, you know, the welfare of the environment and being able to come out here and study and just kind of, you know, get in tune with nature. And it's just not, an overall great experience. What do you want to do with what you're learning now? Um, I have some background in herpiculture and I've just kind of tried to step out of that a bit because I kind of centralized my studies as far as designs went on herpetology itself. And so when Mr. Rossheim, he kind of brought me out of my comfort zone and showed me some of the other subjects and stuff. And right now I'm pretty much just soaking in as much as I can. <laughs> well, if you go back far enough with birds, you know, they have some common origin, or origins with uh, the reptiles. Yeah. So. That's definitely one of the selling points you brought me here on. It's, um, yeah, checking back the, the uh, lineage. Because I was way into dinosaurs when I was a kid, and that's kind of what brought me to the reptiles, too. And then when I found out, you know, we got birds on that side, too, it just kind of brought a whole other aspect into it. So coming out here, getting to see the birds along with that, it kind of it adds another layer to the... Uh, to the knowledge I already have about how the you know lineage goes back, so be good to watch dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thanks. What are you going to do in the future? I hope to pursue a career in anatomy. Possibly become. Uh, I'd like to become a surgeon, honestly. Um, definitely, I have a few close family members who took a medical field, and they said they loved it, and something that they have a passion for, so I definitely thought, you know, it'd be something worth pursuing, but uh, I'm also love animals, so if I could become a vet or something too, that would also be absolutely amazing, but i definitely like to see if I could step up my game a bit and start heading toward more towards human anatomy and uh, doing stuff like that, possibly pursuing a medical career. <laughs> I'm the president of the Venice High School Zoology Club. I'm also an intern for Mr. Rossheim in his classes, and I'm a student of Mr. Rossheim's. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, what brought you to zoology? I had Mr. Rossheim my freshman year for biology, and then he just introduced me to this whole world of zoology, and I got really involved. And then I took regular zoology class, and now I'm in the dual enrollment zoology class. That's great. What do you find really exciting about the field? I think what I find the most exciting about all of it is learning about yeah. how animals work and their behavior and what makes them their own species and all of that stuff because it just shows how unique every species is. What do you hope to do in the future? Um, it's kind of, it used to be animal related, but it's kind of grown from that. I want to be a hospitality management major at USF Sarasota. 
but I think I'm going to branch that out and also get a biological minor and work at Disney World in the Animal Kingdom realm. That's always been my dream. Well, that combines both those careers. That's great. See anything today that uh, surprised you? I'd say I was really excited to see the pipe build Grieb. It was my favorite. I've always seen pictures of it and I've never really seen it in person on my binoculars or anything and it was gorgeous and I love seeing it. They're, they're interesting birds. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Thanks. Thank you. So how was it? It was a beautiful winter morning. It started out as 42 degrees, but it's heated up and it's great to be outside. We have 30 zoology club students that are out here from Venice High School participating in the Great Backyard Bird Count, and we saw lots of great stuff. Um, highlights so far have been an American bittern, a least bittern, um, common yellow throat, purple gallinule, and just great to be out here in a treasure like the celery fields observing nature. Not that green heron that was there it seemed to stay there forever. Yeah, we've, we were very fortunate. We had a green heron that was very cooperative and let, uh, let our kids photograph them. And the American bittern was very cooperative. We got some great looks and some great photos. Any surprises? Um, the surprises are we haven't yet seen roseate spoonbill and white pelicans that were here just a week ago, but that's the joy of being out in nature. Sometimes you get surprises, like we didn't expect to see the American bittern and the least bittern as well as we did, and uh, you never know what you're going to get. It's not like going to a zoo. We celebrate Earth Day once a year. It's a reminder that our connection to nature should be an ongoing process. It is good for the planet, and it is good for the human spirit. Mm -hmm.